Hi, my name is uh, Etienne Sanson from Robotic and welcome to the lesson on the safety of the robotic pelletizing solution. Methods of safeguarding include but are not limited to fencing the cell and using safety interlocks, fencing the cell and using light curtains, or using area scanners. Fencing is a simple and cost-effective way of safeguarding operators from the palletizing cell. You simply have fences to prevent operators from reaching the work envelope of the palletizer. Entering the area is done by opening a door that is linked to a safety interlock. When the operator pulls the door, the safety interlock is triggered and the cell will stand still. Once the operator exits the cell, he needs to close the door and restart the cell with either a push button or directly on the robot interface if available outside the cell. This solution is simple but has some major downside. First off, opening, closing the door and restarting the job takes some time from the operator, reducing the cycle time. Second, the footprint of the cell, adding these fences, will take some space on your floor and your cell might be massive to redeploy. Another variant of the fencing is using light curtains instead of door. Think of the light curtain as if they were a virtual door. When the operator crosses the curtain, safeguard will be triggered and the cell will stand still. The solution is more expensive than a physical door but has some strong advantages. First off, you don't need to open and close the door, so you save some cycle time. Also, this allows you to do some compact design. The light curtain can be quite close to the pallet, since it uses a very little footprint and does not constrain the operator movement around the pallet. The only downside is that you still need the operator to restart the cell on the HMI. In Cobot application, it's very common to use safeguarding via a RIA scanner. This solution is the cleanest and most efficient, but also the most costly. The main advantage is that you don't need physical fences, saving a lot of space and adding flexibility for potential redeployment of the palletizer. Also, the scanner will know if someone approached, thus you can generally work by having different zones. This zone will be reprogrammable depending on your application. Such a solution will also automatically restart when the operator exits the safeguarding zone. No need to restart operation with an HMI. Most of the scanner will cover a specific angle, so make sure you cover the area you need to. You might require more than one scanner or you might need some partial fencing to save some cost. Note that the safeguarding device and HMI device, like a start button, are not provided in the robotic solution. The robotic palletizer solution supports any safeguarding device that can be inputted in the robot 24V safeguard input and the provided safety relay. If your safety device has an OSSD signal, commonly found on light curtain and safety scanners, it will need some conversion to a continuous 24 volt signal before being plugged into the robot and provided relay. Feel free to download the electric drawing below this lesson if you want to have more information on how to connect safety device on the robotic palletizing solution. Also, don't hesitate to contact your local safety device supplier since they can help you with your project. That's it for the Cobot Palletizing Cell Safety Lesson. Hope this will clarify what you need to consider before integrating the palletizing cell. See you next time to continue your Cobot Cell integration together.